What if you could have a career where the opportunities are as vast as our nation, where it's not about mission statements, but a shared mission? At U.S. Customs and Border Protection, we go beyond to protect more than borders, from ship to shore, air to ground, cities to local communities. CBP agents and officers are keeping people safe. Join U.S. Customs and Border Protection and go beyond for something far greater than yourself. Learn more at cbp.gov careers. Now for our story. It was the evening of Kit Mead's return to Wakefield from California. Ben Calvert and his son-in-law, Bill, had met Kit at the station, where she'd presented them proudly with Lisa Fenner's baby son, told them it was her baby and Bill's. After putting the baby to bed in the nursery at Ben Calvert's house, Kit had confessed to being very tired, and Bill had offered to make her a cup of tea. In the kitchen, he talked to Ben's wife, Jessie, for a while. When he returned to the living room upstairs, he found Kit alone. Ben had taken a last look at the sleeping baby, had said goodnight and gone into Jessie to tell her triumphantly how well his plans had worked out. Now Kit puts down a teacup, leans back luxuriously in the big easy chair. Oh, that was wonderful, Bill. There's nothing so cheering to a tired woman as a good cup of strong tea. Well, I hate to admit it, but I'm not responsible. Jessie came in over to make it. I figured she'd do a better job. Oh, you shouldn't have told me. I was just going to say what a handy person you're going to be to have around the house. Well. I can see you're still the same modest, unassuming lad you were when I went away. Oh, maybe it's just that I know my own limitations. No, you mustn't say that, Bill. As a loyal wife, I'm prepared to deny that you have any limitations. Tell me about your stay in California, Kit. Must have been pretty lonesome. Or did you look up any of your old friends? No, I saw very few people. You can understand that I was hardly in the mood for doing the night clubs. No, I guess not. But since the baby came, you must have had your hands full. I don't see how you managed. Oh, well, I got onto it rather quickly. I can usually learn things if, if it's important enough. Well, but the trip out here must have been pretty tough. Well, it wasn't exactly relaxing. <laughs> but, darling, don't try to make a martyr out of me. I wasn't intended to wear a crown of thorns. I always manage... Somehow. I'm much more interested in what's been happening to you. My story isn't very exciting either. I've just been going along, living from day to day. And what about the army? Oh, I'm sweating it out. But I expect I'll be discharged fairly soon. Oh, I hope so, darling. It'll be so wonderful for a change not to share you with Uncle Sam. Kit, there are... We have a lot of things to talk about. I know, darling. Where shall we begin? No, no. Wait a minute. On second thought, I'll begin. You didn't tell me everything that's happened since I've been away. What do you mean? About Peggy Douglas, for instance. Peggy? But it... Yes. I understand she's very much taken up with some new man. A writer, I believe. It's true, isn't it? Well, whether it's true or not, it has nothing to do with us. Of course it hasn't, darling. But I'm glad Peggy's life is settled for us. Now there's nothing to cloud ours. Nothing at all. Kit, I'm... I'm a little confused. I know, darling, you're overwhelmed. This evening has been quite a shock to you. Seeing a baby for the first time and... And then I can understand that you feel a bit strange about me. It takes a little time to... to become acquainted again. Maybe that's part of it. No, Bill. If you only knew how I've looked forward to this. Thought about it day after day. I even dreamed about it. About coming home, showing you the baby. The expression on your face when you looked at him the first time. It sure was a surprise. I know. It was worth all those long months seeing you with a baby in your arms at the station, just as I dreamed about it. Because I knew how much you wanted a child, Bill. And now I've given you a son. Yeah. A son. Oh, we'll be so happy, Bill. I don't want to think about the past at all. 
You just think about the future. About us. You and me and the baby. Kid, I... I don't know what to say. Oh, don't try to say anything, darling. I know how you feel. You're always most silent when your emotions are deeply involved. I'm glad you aren't able to chatter. But... Well, I've been pent up so long thinking about you. I wish you wouldn't talk like that. But why shouldn't I, darling? Surely you don't think it's indecent for a wife to tell her husband how much she loves him? How much she loves the father of her child? No, but... Oh, I guess I'm pretty tired myself. My head's going around in circles. Oh, poor darling. You're exhausted. But never mind. Everything's going to quiet down now. No more trouble, no more confusion. It isn't that. I know what's the matter. You haven't been taking care of yourself properly. Probably been living on tamales and sardines, not getting enough sleep. Oh, speaking of sleep, I think we both could use some. Shall we go to bed? That room Jesse fixed up looks very inviting. Well, I... Come on now, Bill. We can talk in the morning. You know, we haven't even named the baby yet. I wanted to wait until I came home so you could help me decide. Darling, see that the fire screen's in place, will you? And turn off the light. Kit went into the bedroom. Bill stood looking into the fire, troubled, miserable. The evening had been a nightmare to him. Then, sighing, he followed Kit into the other room. As he came in, she was moving busily from suitcase to dressing table. She looked up cheerfully. Oh, don't look so alarmed, darling. I'm not going to do all my unpacking now. I'm just taking out what I'll need till morning. Oh, now, where did I put it? Oh, yes, here it is. Why don't you sit down on that nice, comfortable chair and rest? This will just take me a jiffy. There are cigarettes and matches on the table there. What about the baby, Kit? Doesn't he get fed during the night? Oh, yes. He has a feeding at two. Six in the morning, two in the afternoon, and six in the evening, and two a.m. That must be pretty rugged for you, getting up at two and six. <laughs> oh, I'm used to it now. At first, I didn't sleep at all. I was so afraid I'd sleep through his feeding time. <laughs> Not that there's much danger of that. He simply wakes up and howls when he's hungry. He's been awfully quiet tonight. Well, the trip was tiring for him. Poor little guy. He's been so good about it, too. He's really a wonderfully good baby, Bill. I think he has your disposition. I've never been famous for my sunny nature. Oh, Bill, that's not so. You have a wonderful disposition. So what's the matter with you tonight? You're so retiring. I think I just came back in time to avert a possible inferiority complex. Want any help with your unpacking? No, no, no. I'm all finished now. I'll just hang this up in the closet till I have something to wear tomorrow. Why, Bill, you, you haven't moved in any of your things. No, I... But, darling, why didn't you think of it? Hadn't you better take Dad's car and run over and get them? At least enough for tonight. You can move the rest over tomorrow. I didn't move them over, Kit, because... Well, because I'm not going to stay here. What? I've been wanting to tell you all evening, but somehow... You... I'm sorry, kid, but that's the way it is. I'm not going to stay here. But you've let me think... I didn't want you to. I tried to tell you, but the words just wouldn't come out. Kit, surely you can understand why. Kit Mead looked into her husband's face. He looked miserable. And yet his jaw was set with determination. For a moment, her mind went blank. She hadn't counted on this. She'd been so sure that when he saw the child, Lisa Fenner's child, which he believed was his own son, that all their former difficulties would melt away. And now, this. But perhaps he just meant he didn't want to stay in her father's house. He'd refused to before, but she thought the baby would make a difference. That he'd agree to live in the comfortable Calvert house for the child's sake. Was that all there was to it? 
Or did Bill mean something else? Something much more final? 